What's up guys? Justin here with the CGessentials.com. So in today's video, we're going to talk about how to use the spend tool in Blender to extrude objects along curves. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so you can access the spend tool by selecting an object and then tabbing into edit mode. And so once you're inside of edit mode, there's a tool down here called the spend tool. So you can access that by clicking on spend right here. And basically what that's going to do is that's going to allow you to select a shape so in this case, something like this surface right now, and you're gonna be able to spin it based on the location of the 3D cursor. So let's say for example, that I was to place the 3D cursor right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna set this so I can find the midpoint. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this on the central point of this edge right here. And notice how I get this little green option right here. If yours is red, or if it's uh, blue, then notice how you can adjust that by coming in here and adjusting the X, Y, or Z right here. And so that's going to set which direction you can spin an object. And so let's say I was to click and drag this right here. Well, notice what that's doing is that's spinning the surface around whatever location or whatever point the 3D cursor is currently at. And remember that you can, with the tool active, come in here and adjust this. So let's say I wanted this to go 90 degrees like this. I could just type in a value of 90 degrees. And so notice what that did is that basically duplicated this object 12 times while rotating it along this green axis right here. Notice if I was to type in a value of something like 24, I would get more detail in here. Um, if I was to type in a value of like 8, I would get less detail in here. And so you can use this in order to do a bunch of interesting things, but usually what you're going to do the most of is you're going to use this to like lathe an object. But let's take a look at some of the other options in here. And so for this one, let's go ahead and place the 3D cursor in the middle of the face just so we can get an idea of what that might do. So now if I was to tab into edit mode and select, let's say maybe the X axis in this situation, and I was to use the spin tool, notice what that's going to do is that's going to spin this about the center rather than around the edge right here. So again, the location of your 3D cursor is going to drive the result that you create right here. And so notice how a couple of these options will affect the way that this uh, creates surfaces. So first off, if you check the box for use duplicates, notice what that's going to do is that's just going to duplicate your object a certain number of times. So if I was to type in a value of 12, notice how I would get 12 duplicates. So if you uncheck that, it's going to create the faces that are in here. And so notice how in addition, there's also an option for auto merge, which we're not gonna to talk too much about. So if we check the box for flip normals, well, it's going to reverse the normal direction for any resulting geometry. So that's just going to affect the way that those faces face, basically. So in addition, there's also options in here for the center value. So right now, right, it's setting our center value based on our 3D cursor. You can adjust this location in order to adjust the result that you're getting on three different axes, right? So you can basically move this so it's no longer at the 3D cursor location, but rather it's uh, at whatever location you set using the distances right here. And so let's say you wanted to add like a twist to this or something like this, you can also adjust things like your X, Y, and Z rotation right here. So that's basically going to adjust the rotation of your central point. And so real quick, let's talk about a practical application for this. So let's say you had a profile like this one. And obviously this is just kind of an odd profile, but it'll work for what we're trying to do here. So let's say that I was to place my 3D cursor on this corner right here. So we're gonna place the 3D cursor here, then I'm gonna tab into edit mode, and I'm gonna select everything by tapping the A key. Well, notice what I could do is I can go ahead and I can give this a 360 degree rotation or more. You generally don't wanna do more than 360, but if I do 360 degrees right here, notice how I'm able to take this profile and create a shape based on that profile. And you could make it smoother by upping the number of steps that are in here. So again, um, remember that the more steps you have in here, the more geometry you're creating. But you can use this in order to create um, symmetrical like spun or lathed shapes like this really easily. And so another thing you could do with this is let's say that you've got like a cylinder, like this one right here, right? All right, and so as another practical example, let's say that you had something like this cylinder right here and you wanted to set this so that it kind of extrudes 90 degrees. So maybe if it was like a pipe or something like that. And so what you could do is you could set your 3D cursor on this location right here. And again, I find the vertex snapping to be super helpful in doing that. But then you can tab into edit mode and notice how you can select each one of these individually 
or you could also come in here and do a shift click in order to select multiple different axes. Since I'm only gonna do it on the X axis, um, it probably doesn't matter all that much. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select this face right here. And based on that 3D cursor location, I'm gonna give this a 90 degree curve right here. So, or in this case, we're gonna type in negative 90. So that gives me a nice curve based on that 3D cursor location. Well then, I'm just gonna move my 3D cursor to this point right here. I'm just gonna run the spin tool again. In this case though, I'm going to have it run the other direction. So I can have this run 90 degrees in this direction. And again, notice how you can adjust the number of steps in here to adjust the um, amount of geometric complexity that you have in here. And you can also adjust the location of your X and Y center like this. So if I move this up, Notice how um, that's going to give me a different result than how it worked otherwise. But I can kind of play around with this in order to kind of make this follow the direction that I want. And the cool thing about this is it is allowing me to kind of like uh, rotate around in here so I can kind of see what I'm doing and then make adjustments. So if you don't like the result that you're getting, you can come in here and you can adjust it while still flying around this object. All right, so leave a comment below. Let me know what you're using the spin tool for. I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.